Thanks, guys. Uh, every teenage girl needs that big sister advice, even if they don't even have an older sibling to dish it out. But coming up next on The Nine, we'll chat with actress Dawn Martin about her new book, Fast Girls Finished Last. Okay, thanks a lot, Leah. She is a hometown girl who's been a model, teenage beauty, and she's been on Days, in our, Days of Our Lives. And you can also add author to Don Martin's accomplishments. She's written a book called Fast Girls Finish Last, and she's here to tell us all about it. This is a wonderful book. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Camp, for having me. Sure. Now, tell us about the premise of this. Uh, you know, Fast Girls Finish Last, which was you know kind of kind of self-explanatory there. Uh, what your idea is is to to get girls to wait and and to to practice. Abstinence. Correct. The book advocates that all teenage girls between 13 to 18 should graduate from high school a virgin. Okay, and that it's, it is actually a girl's guide to becoming a virgin with attitude. Yes. So how do we? How do they accomplish that? Be proud, number one, that you're a virgin, and. Make it your business to be a virgin uh, by any means necessary, meaning that if it's necessary to take a self-defense course, because as you know, being an attractive lady, some guys can become very aggressive. I remember when I had to physically push guys off of me. Oh. So I believe that all girls should take a self-defense course. Karate, uh, judo, craft magna is an excellent course. And it's, I really like this book because it's, a, it's kind of a workbook, too. It yes. has your, your advice and your wisdom in it, but there are places to, you know, you know you, like an IOU and a, and a vow to just say no, and you sign it and you print your name, yes. and it's, it's kind of yeah. official. It's really, it's really a, a nice... Yeah. I've had such a wonderful response uh, from this book. Girls actually, they love it. They love the feel of it. It's a very pretty book for girls. Mm -hmm. And I have had stories uh, told to me that girls, they let their girlfriends borrow the book and they have a problem getting it back. Oh, okay, <laughs> right. And when they do, it's all tattered and torn. Right. Now, in it, you say your, your mother, your own mother would have thrown you out had you become oh, a teenage oh my, a mother. Not allowed. Um, and, and I believed her because I, my estranged sister did become, uh, as statistics state, a two-time teenage oh, mother. Mm -hmm. One at 17, and she turned around and she had another baby. And so I believed my mother when she said, if you become pregnant, I will throw you out like I did, you know, you know my, right. my other sister. And she instilled, you know, some fear in me. My mother bribed me. She threatened me <laughs> and or to me, uh, basically on a daily basis because she knew that once I hit uh, the high school, and which is true, the boys, they were just after me. And so without my mother, I probably would have ended up, you know, like my sister, a teenage mother. Right. And you do give the advice that, you know, the, what the ramifications are and the reality of becoming a teenage mom. Sometimes they glorify it on television with these, you know, shows lately, but, you know, it's not what it's cracked up to be. I mean, it's, you know, they make it's these... It's not cracked up to be, to me, anything uh -uh. at all. No. So, te look, babies and high school books and sex, it just doesn't mix. And statistics state that actually uh, $302 million in the state of Michigan is spent uh, on teen pregnancy. And also, there, there's many statistics as far as the babies born to teen mothers mm -hmm. have a higher incident of abuse. Right and being incarcerated and uh, I think it's 22 percent uh, according to the national campaign to, pre to prevent teen pregnancy that end up on welfare. Well it's a great book so thank you for sharing it with us thank and there's so a much. book signing tomorrow you can meet Dawn at the Truth Bookstore inside the Northland Mall which is right across the street so she'll be there from 3 to 4 p.m. and you can get all the information on our website which is myfoxdetroit.com just head to our mornings page thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure. Find your passion and pursue it that is one of the tips our next guest has for teens to help them them stay young and innocent as long as they can. Author of Fast Girls Finish Last, A Girl's Guide to Becoming a Virgin with Attitude, Don Martin is here. Thanks for coming to us today. Thank you so much for having me, Renee. Well, it is an interesting story because you were personally motivated to be passionate about this topic. Your sister was a two-time teenage mom. You grew up around it and you thought, you know what, I want to spread this message two other girls. Definitely. And I saw how much she suffered and how much she struggled. And um, if it had not been for my mother and my aunt, her life would have been 
worse and I saw how it absolutely just ruined her life. I really felt sorry for her that here she was you know with a baby uh, at 17 years of age and I got to go outside and play and she was just uh, you know bombarded with uh, these motherly chores. Your book has a lot of tips in it about um, helping girls stay strong and not succumb to peer pressure. And I think that that is a really challenging thing to do at that age because friends are everything. But you know, I, I really love my motto that I've always had since I was a teenager. And my motto is this, um, what you think of me is none of my business. <laughs> And before you condemn yourself and just, you know, doom yourself, what I think you need to do is give yourself hope. And uh, just because other teens are practicing safe sex and people are saying, well, teens are going to do it anyway, no. You need to stand up for yourself and you need to learn how to say no. And I highly recommend that all girls take a self-defense course. It sounds like you're very, very passionate about yes. this. And I know that there's some other important messages in your book as far as letting your parents be more of an influence than the boys at school. Exactly. Do not listen to the cute, charming, popular guy. Listen to your parents. And you should always let your parents know where you are. And on the flip side, parents need to always let their children know where they are. Virgin with an attitude. What yes. Is, what does that mean? Be proud that you're a virgin. Be proud of, of the fact that you're not, uh, you know, letting your, your reputation just slip by. Because believe it or not, a bad reputation will follow a girl the rest of their life. Even today, I run into classmates and they're telling me, the, the guys, you know, who the, excuse the expression, who the sluts were in school and what they did. And I think it's just horrible. It will definitely ruin your reputation the rest of your life. So just a As reminder a, that actions have consequences. Definitely. Okay. Your book is out. And uh, again, I know it's available at lots of bookstores. And it's Fast Girls Finish Last become a virgin with an attitude. And it's also available on my website at dawnmartin.com. Dawnmartin.com. Thank you so much for coming to us today. A pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for having me. I have me. a couple of guests today, and I want to begin our show with our first uh, celebrity author, and she is from right here in Detroit. I'm so glad that she came in today. Dawn Martin joins us in the F Club. Hi, Dawn. How are you today? Hi. Thank you so much for having me here. Ramona. It's a it's pleasure. A, it's a pleasure to meet you. You're beautiful, too. And you are, too. Well, I appreciate it. Never take your glasses off, just in case uh, whatever you're looking through, go, anointing, it wears off. <laughs> but I'm bumping. Just kidding. But Dawn, uh, I love the title of this book. And it's one of those things that makes you think, like, hmm, wait a minute. It, it, it's a spin off the old saying that, uh, you know, nice girls finish uh, well, I guess bad girls finish first most times in a row. Is that the truth? Absolutely not. So fast girls finish last is the title of the book. Yes. And it's a girl's guide to becoming a virgin with an attitude. That's correct. That's amazing. Now, again, somebody's scratching their head in the car as they're driving. How is that possible? And what was the motiva motivation for the book? Okay. Um, let me address, firstly, my motivation was I was on all these talk shows Basically, they were entitled, they were titled as being beautiful, a curse, gorgeous, glamorous, and alone. And I talked about celibacy wow. and it, things kind of snowballed. Okay. And I received so many letters from people all over the world and guys too. And a lot of girls asking me, when is your book going to come out? And, uh, are you going to write a book? Where can I buy the book? And I'm like, I don't have a book. And I, I didn't take it seriously until my now estranged sister said you need to write a book wow. and so because I studied journalism and I like to keep my life organized like everyone else mm -hmm. I keep a pen and paper by my bed okay so one day I remember it was like four o'clock in the morning I was half asleep and something said fast girls finish last and I wrote this title down and when I got up to step out of my bed I said oh and I looked at it and said, oh, Fast Girls Finish Last. That's the title of my book. I love it. So that's how the title came about. So, and you would know only because the industry that you've worked in, and you've been around a lot of glamorous, beautiful people most of your life. You have, you're a former model. Uh, 
Days of Our Lives actress. Most of you guys may remember Dawn from Days of Our Lives. You are stunning. It, it, it's amazing. And I know you probably have access or have had a front row seat to all of the joys, benefits, as well as downfalls and uh, pain of the glamorous life. I think being beautiful, see, when I think of beauty, I think of inside. But physically... I the more common I, version. Yeah. I think it's you know being. I think it's like having a curse. And I just want to say, a lot of times I don't really. I'm not in tune with what I look like. So when I react to people, I'm like, oh, you do. You know, you do think. Were you ever people, though? I mean, I, is this a revolution? A revelation no, for no, you? No, no. I, I don't go around carrying a mirror in front of me when I'm walking all the time. I don't go around staring at myself. Well, no, I understand that. That's where you are. But you're living in a world where people view you, you and they say, oh my God, you're beautiful. Well, since you're a little young, since you're a young girl. Uh, were you ever cognizant of, oh my God, I'm, I'm different than other people or people are treating me differently based on my appearance? People definitely treat me differently mm -hmm. when I dress up and okay. I accentuate whatever assets I have. Well, the first thing I want to say is that I have absolutely nothing to do with what I look like. Absol none of us do. I am just yeah. a janitor for Jesus' property. How about that? This temporary vehicle that I'm in. How about so that? So if anyone has issues with that, they need to take it up with my mother and my father. How about that? Or and Eugene Poole. Right. I never really felt, and, let, and you know, when I was in the beauty pageants, yes, because I had to prance across stages with, you know, in swimsuits and things, then, I, you know, and and that everyone, was a part of it. That's well, a part of why you're there. Then I was more cognizant okay. of my appearance. But I, I might, you know, it, it might be because my mother never, like, she never made me feel like I was, she never let, kept saying, she never really kept saying to me, oh, you're so pretty. Yeah. She never really focused on that. She, so she, you came out of, out, of, out of the home, though, with a book pretty balanced idea of yourself and your identity not based on your physical appearance that's true and it's not, but I, I, my house was like that a lot too we, we didn't know what we looked like people would tell me you have dimples and i was in high school like what in the world was a dimple i would really no um, kidding i know that sounds crazy but i would look uh, in the mirror like where what is exactly, a dimple i didn't even exactly. know what a dimple was you know first of all all of us had it wow had them so yeah. we it, i wasn't different than anybody else in the house i see but just to, I use that example just to say how unaware we were of physical attributes. She just, we never talked about anything. Are you unaware of your beautiful skin? It's uh, flawless. I just got this skin a couple of months ago, thanks oh, to my dermatologist. I don't know. <laughs> it's flawless. I, well, I appreciate it, but Gorgeous. Amanda will tell you my struggles with adult acne, and I have a wow. great dermatologist, and the last few months... Uh, I've come through a change. Oh, bless his name on tonight. Well, under these bright lights, I'm looking at it. <laughs> Thank you. Closely, and it's really perfect. Thank you. Beauty products and water and vitamin A. Amen. Wow. You know, I, I do want to add that, if anything, my mother did not focus on compliments at all. It was okay. criticism of me. Really? So yes. did that make you, now, did that work the opposite effect? Did you feel, have less self-esteem? Did you feel like you weren't beautiful because of the criticism? No, I, because... I, no, because I'm, I, I knew, I mean, I could go to a mirror. It, it didn't. It just made me feel like I had to work on bettering myself. Really? Yes. That's amazing. But that might have been something that have kept you balanced and saved you for your life. You know what I mean? Like if you, yeah, if you I fed into it, I understand. if you were unbalanced, leaving the house about how gorgeous you oh. were, and then you wouldn't have that uh, side to no, say, well, no, maybe no. my legs or maybe no. my... Because she'll call me back in a minute. Wait a minute. You can't go out looking like that. Oh, that sounds like or, my mother. Or No. That sounds like my but Let me add also, Ramona, that, you know, to elaborate, just because you look a certain way. One moment, please. I'm on the air, children. My kids keep calling me. This is reality radio. Kids, call Amanda. I'm on the air, okay? Call Amanda Paul. All right? Thank you. I'm sorry, it's the efforts. You know how Kobe and Mike call me every day after school, and they keep, they don't, I don't know how many years I got to do on the radio before they stop calling me at live. Call the kids. Amen. The number in the studio, 313-298-1200 is the number. Our special guest celebrity author is Dawn Martin. She's talking about her new book, Fast Girls Finish Last, A Girl's Guide to Becoming a Virgin with Attitude, which is, I love the whole concept of that. Um, but you were talking about how we were, you were at home. You were a beautiful woman. You were, you were a model. Uh, you've been, first of all, thank you for coming to the F Club radio show after you've been on Geraldo, Oprah, <laughs> Montel, <laughs> after, Donahue, after Christina. My mother keeping me balanced. I love that. And she just came to little old humble F Club radio show. I'm so glad that you joined us today. We're honored to have you. But also former Days of Our Lives actress. And so you've been in the world plunged with, you know, hair, makeup, nails, everything. Yes, I've you know, turned down offers from producers to 
uh, be their mate and so forth. Awesome. So forth. I can imagine. Oh. But, you know, just to kind of elaborate on what you were saying earlier, Ramona, um, people think that, well, if you're beautiful, then you should have, you know, you should as many men as you want. Okay. However, you... In my opinion, you may be able to catch, but that doesn't mean you should sleep or are sleeping with. Yeah. That, well, one doesn't necessarily number. mean the exactly. other. But some, for some people, that's their perception. But to me, I think it's a blessing to have choices based upon your physical appearance. And that, and I, and I, let me clarify what I'm saying is, because uh, I, I, I believe you are, you attract who you are, first of all. So whether you're a great looking person or you're a horrible person inside, you tend to attract those kind of people, no matter what your physical appearance is. Especially if somebody sits down and has a conversation with you, you know, well, it's a nice house, but there's nobody home. <laughs> so anybody who is of quality may, may, may be attracted to you via, you know, what you, what you look like. But if they're of quality too, and they sit down and speak with you, and like, nah, that's not what I'm looking for, and I'm not, exactly. I'm not attracted to that. Exactly. It was inside, the beyond the shell. Mm -hmm. Especially here, the F Club Radio Show is for people in their 40s, 50s, and to forever. We get this stage in our lives, we make, or we're supposed to be making quality decisions uh, based on, uh, well, not based on those superficial qualifications that we did in our 20s and 30s. Shout out to you, 20s and 30s. Uh, so I know I'm not going to say all of you guys are fickle like that, but hopefully. You're making quality decisions with regard to mates or relationships based on things deeper than the shell. So when you came up with this title, Fast Girls Finish Last, you were awake, you were asleep, you woke up, uh, you wrote the title down, and you, you decided to share the secrets uh, that prevented you from becoming the fast girl. And you want others to know about and tell girls why you need to keep your virginity. Th that has to be hard in that business that you're in. No. Was it challenging? It wasn't at all, ever? Not with my mother. Beautiful. So was, was you, did you have a stage mom? No, no. So she, she, no it she, just she, was she, in you. My mother basically was a preacher. Okay, a, well, a, mom, a mom preacher. Okay. Not, not when I say religion, not religion. Right. But as soon as I hit the door, she was on me. My mother threatened me. Okay. She bribed me and or cussed to me daily. Okay. I And, and as soon as I hit the the uh, the school door then the guys were on me because I was the first black majorette in the history of our high school and you went to school here correct I went to school in eCourse okay I graduated from eCourse high I will say that I begged my mother to let me go to eCourse high because initially I had never seen a black person until I hit our our street which was 18th street in eCourse okay because my mother and my stepfather drove us across town to an all-white Catholic school. And I, I never saw black people. I did have a sister, a now estranged sister, and I would wave you know, to her in the hallway. So, right. And I saw my mother just come to the uh, uh, nun's office with just boxes of $20 bills. And I, and I wanted to experience the black experience. And I begged my mother. I pleaded with her, please let me go to public school, please. I, I pleaded for maybe a year. Finally, she relented. Okay. And when I walked through Ecorse High, oh, my goodness. I had never seen so many cute black guys in <laughs> all my life. Oh, my God. I fell in love at age 13 years old. Awesome. And wow, we kazawi. Wow, <laughs> I love it. So I, love I think it. she knew what I was up against. Okay. And as soon as I hit the door, she, oh, wow. She never let up. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she did let you stay. Stay. In public school? Yes, she did. Okay. But she just was on you like right on right. Yes. Huh? Well, tell me, how did you do it? If you, because the book is about telling people how important it is to preserve your virginity. You worked in a fast-paced business with men galore and gorgeous actors That's that you had to hug and kiss and whatever else. Well, you make me think of this guy I used to date. Ah! You can't go. <laughs> but yeah, he was a, a regular on Young and the Restless. Uh -huh. Oh, a billboard model. Okay, wow. Famous and just, wow. So do you just count to just, 10 backwards in no, your head we, every time? We were steady. It, it, for what? I mean, you said you kept your virginity. Did you keep your virginity it, throughout it, the... Th through, through, through high school. Through high school, okay. Um, yeah. Yes, I did graduate from high school a virgin. I, I did too, as a matter of fact. Wow, yes. let me congratulate now, I was you. 19 in my first Whoa, sexual experience. Yes. I'm just going to share. I mean, it is what it is, and the guy knows who wow. he is. I married him shortly after, That's but yes. That's wonderful. Didn't uh, they give you self-pride? Aren't you proud of that as you look back? You know I what? Know I am. Um, they, I, I have mixed emotions. Now, I'll tell you why. Not for the obvious reasons. Not for morality. 
it's just that I think I learned the game late in life. Like people were able to run game on me because I was such a naive. I, my dad came home every day at 530. Uh -huh. and so when my first husband was cheating on me and he was left and right, I didn't know. Okay. Because if he said he was out all night on a stakeout or whatever, I believed him. I see. Or he was undercover. He was actually undercover. But I thought he was, you know, undercover, uh, you know, working a case. So I, he was cheating on me left and right. But I had no idea. I don't know how long it was but, going on before I even has, knew. But that really wouldn't have helped you um, not... I just wasn't wor a virgin. Well, I just That's think what? that I was not worldly wise. I didn't have any concept of well, well, any you, life other than mom, dad, sister, brother, come home every day, go to church on Sunday. I had a very structured, very boring, we'll but see. safe life. Okay, but you can still, like me, graduate from high school a virgin and have a lot of street sense. Well, see? I was very popular. There was, I mean, I was class hair, class clown. I, I was very popular. Wow. But I did not sleep with anybody in high school. I just didn't. And I was I ma mainly because I was afraid of my mother. She said, I'll, see, I can smell there. if you have sex. I Ooh. know you. She said, Heffa, I know you, you'll start walking for me. And I, I'm sorry. Oh, so oh, my God. This sounds like my, my mother. My mother, like, I can smell it. Yep. yep and so yep. I, I believed her. Yes. yes, I, yes. I look back now and probably maybe some of that was discernment. Maybe that was just, you know, her bullying me. But I believe whatever. And my dad said, I'm going to know. So I didn't because I believe my parents. Let me add something here. One reason maybe like. 30% of me uh, gr um, having to graduate from high school of virgin is because I believe my mother when she said she would throw me out the house. Why? Because my now estranged eldest sister, she got thrown out the house. Really? And she, oh, yes. My mother was serious. I never saw her pregnant. My mother said, no, I will not have you come in here and ruin the rest of my daughters. She threw her out. Oh, my God. She put her in a all-Catholic a home for unwed mothers? Yes, she did. My mother. Was what was the name of that home? I think my sister. I don't. Oh, what? I swear it. <laughs> I don't know. What's the name of Mac? Uh, something's called Mac. Mac starts with the M. Kind of something sounds like that. familiar. Yeah. Because I listen, my parents are old school like that too, and thank God they mellowed out over the years. Because it was okay. fourteen of us, so by the time Ooh. the first five or six of us been through, they, we could go to prom. It was just we couldn't go to prom. We couldn't wear pants. Oh it was crazy. Same here. It was. It, it was Same to here. me that is just. I don't, <laughs> listen, why I didn't go crazy. <laughs> I don't know. So God preserved me because my parents were off. But they, here, you know, hence, after a, speaking to me, got, became adults, they, they, they acquiesced. It was like, you know, we were, I didn't know everything. Mom, I'm sorry. My mother was, she apologized because my younger sisters and brothers didn't have the same experience that we did. She says, Ramona, I'm learning on you. I don't, I've never been to school to be a mother. I don't know. So she was nice enough to tell us. That's so amazing. a few years later, even, I think we were 16, I tell this story, when we, we, we didn't speak for a, we were like, you know, there's no such thing as you don't speak to your mother, not in my house. But it was not cordial. Hi, mom. I see. Good night, mom. Just whatever the bare minimum was. Right? That's my baby in there. Okay, so, um, but she sat down and says, look, Ramona, I don't know if too, it's too late to go to skating. I don't know if you can't stay out on that. I don't really know. So, but I have been 16 before. So this is my first time being a mom. But if you help me be a mother, I'll help wow. you be 16. And I was... We, we were this close for wow. the rest of our lives. When she died, when I was that's, 24. That's beautiful. But it was that something that she was able that, to take she, that shell off and be wow. vulnerable to so us. So honest. I, I love it. And thank God. I mean, I, we, we would have been cuckoo nuts if she had uh -huh. stayed this rigid person, yeah. I think. Uh, but thank God that's our experience. Everybody has to mm -hmm. go through their own. But I think your mom benefited you a lot of ways, even though she might have been a, a very stern. It's what I needed. Okay. Because to go with, into the business you went into? Well, too? No, no? I, it's what I needed to... Re ha maintain my dignity, my pride, and not be a slut okay. in, in high school. Because I remember kissing this one guy, because I like guys, boys, just as much as they like me. Some Amen. I like probably more than they like me. <laughs> I love it. However, I, love it. I remember this guy, he was just kissing me and kissing me. And I heard my mother's voice just playing in my head. What's going to happen to me? He's just going to talk about you to all his friends later. And I pushed him away, and I'm like, whoa. Wow. But that's a good thing. We, so she instilled fear. At least you have some breaks. You know, there are young girls now that come out of the house with zero breaks. They just do everything because there's no system of checks and, and balances in their head. Right. And guess what? A bad reputation will follow them and or say yes. a woman the rest of their life. I ran into a, a male classmate recently. And what did he tell me that I didn't want to hear? He named names. Not only that, but he told me exactly what they did in high school and i said oh my god why are you sharing this with me yeah, that's and I crazy said, i said she did that in high school yeah isn't it nuts still bragging 
And just the, that, years later, that, that's that crazy. Sluttish image will stay with a girl. It's amazing. I've I've met girls and who I've who, who I've met them, and I had heard their re reputation before I even met them. See, See and there? it's crazy. So it amazing. While you shaking your hand, you're thinking, "Wow, oh my goodness." They say she gives exactly. a really mean Ooh. DJ. I'm serious. No. I, I I've heard that. No. That's, that's the honest that's not truth. Good. And so you know, and I, then it became my motivation for not letting it happen to me as well. See? I was like, See? "Oh, that's never going to happen exactly. to me." Exactly. But I had seven brothers as well, oh, wow. and who and I heard them talk about girls. See, so I was just like, "Oh, I don't want to be that kind of girl my brothers talk about with their friends while they're playing basketball. Right. That's not going to be me." So that was my motivation. Everybody has to use theirs. So does it make me a better person than somebody else? Mm -hmm. Hell no, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. But these were my uh, breaks and my mechanisms that exactly. my parents, and I suggest every parent give their kids something to think about why they're yes. sneaking or on the phone or mm -hmm. th it should be some kind of check in their heads that this is the wrong thing. So, uh, Fast Girls Finish last, uh, you said, why do you keep your virginity? Why? Why, uh, is, why is your virginity worth fighting for? Why the word no is the best birth control and how to create lifelong self-esteem, how to resist peer pressure. These are fantastic topics that quite frankly, don't get dealt with enough uh, within our music, our movies, our videos. The things that we do now, it's like every man for himself and God before us all. There are no rules. It's do what feels mm -hmm. good to you. It's exactly. a liberation mood. Mm -hmm. And so this book comes out now in a time where society needs it. You would think people would soak it up like a sponge. What's been they the are. Oh, my Great. goodness. Great. First of all, I never set out to write a book. Mm -hmm. I never, definitely never set out to write a book about virginity. This book is by popular demand. I have been overwhelmed awesome. as far as, you know, the, the response is concerned. It is, it's been absolutely amazing and surprising to me. I ran into a woman, she's 43 years old yesterday, and she said, I purchased your book. She said, you give such good pointers about sanitation. I talk about what a woman should do with her drink. I talk about, number one, to start respecting yourself. How do you do that? By staying clean. I talk about things that women, that she said, I never even thought about doing that, but it makes so wow. much sense. Well, that's fantastic. Now, you, I'm going to tell you how you can get Dawn's uh, book. Uh, you can get it at www.dawnmartin.com slash M-A-I-N. You know, what we'll do, it's a long email address. So what we'll do is a, uh, post a link to our website on, on our website to her website at wchbnewsdetroit.com uh are you going to be at a book signing yes at truth bookstore tomorrow i mean saturday may 7th from three to four i love truth bookstore love nefertiri hey you guys out there truth bookstore love 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 them they were so kind to me i had a book signing there a couple of about a month ago they were wow. fantastic but make sure you go see dawn she's going to be there saturday may 7th from three to four at truth bookstore at northland mall all the people that are listening to me under the sound of my voice, you guys know where Northland is, and you certainly know where Truth is. It's been there for 17 years or so, doing a uh, fantastic job in our community. Dawn's going to be there with her book. I suggest you bring your young ladies as well. If you're yeah, an and boys, too. And boys, okay. But let me please say one thing sure. about the subtitle. A virgin with attitude. What does that mean? That means handle your business, girls, and graduate from high school by any means necessary, meaning that you need to also take a self-defense course, karate, craft, magna, because I remember many a day that I had to physically push a guy away that was becoming too aggressive. You know how boys can be. Yeah, yeah. You're attractive. They get too physical, too close start pulling out private parts yeah. no 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 and you know unfortunately those are the times you realize that you're not as strong as a man yes and you may not ever realize yes. at any time but when you get in those kind of physical you realize oh my god if he really wanted to continue mm -hmm. there'll be nothing i yes. can do to stop and, and it happens so quick yes and then you you can't get it back yeah take a self-defense course yeah, I'm tell I think that's a fantastic idea. I never even heard people talk about that, but that's a great identity. Uh, I, I think it's an identity marker. And All it's a girls, great thing. especially with abductions today. I love it. I love it. So, again, Truth Bookstore, Saturday, May 7th from 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, you can meet Dawn Martin in person. Again, she was a former Days of Our Lives actress and model, teen beauty queen. She's gorgeous now. I mean, so it, it, it obviously has carried her into her F years. Uh, she's been on Oprah, Geraldo, Montel, Donahue, Christina, and British television. And she humbled herself low enough <laughs> to come to the Apple You're so Radio sweet. Show. I'm just so glad that you decided to make a stop here while you're in your hometown of Detroit. Now, you're in L.A. now. Are you in California? I live in Orange County. I live in Costa Mesa. Awesome. If you ever so come you, there, look me up. I, well, listen, don't say that because I'm coming. My son now lives in Cupertino. Oh. So he works for Apple. So when oh, I go wow. visit him, I have to come. 
come up to Wonder. Santa Ana as well. I have a guest room waiting. When I say, listen, don't tell me I'm ghetto. I'm bougetto. Uh -oh. so you tell me that I'm coming. <laughs> yes, you'll love it. <laughs> I can't wait. I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a little uh, break in the weather. Five I'm minutes like, from Uncle, the beach. Are you serious? Five minutes from Newport Girl, Beach. Girl, boom, we coming. Me and Amanda, we coming to your okay. house and camp out That's for sure. That's fine with me. Dawn, thank you for coming. Thank we got to take you. a quick break. Again, please do not forget to attend this book sign. You can meet the author and get your book signed. I strongly suggest you get it. F Parents of Boys and Girls. This is a must-have for your shelf. And if your girls are turning sweet 16 or sweet 13, because you know, we celebrate 13s in our house because it's your first double digit. I mean, your first teenage. Yeah. Year. So we have a big blow up, kind of like a bat mitzvah uh, for African Americans. But wow. we do that in our homes because it's your first teenage year. I love it. So, parents, it's a great idea to get for your nieces, nephews, neighbor, I mean, uh, nieces, uh, uh, daughter, teen. It's a perfect time. They can get it earlier, but it is a perfect gift for that. It's a coming of age book. But I really appreciate you coming, Dawn. Thank you kindly. No so problem. Much for having no problem. Me. Truth Bookstore, Saturday, 3 to 4. Dawn Martin, our special guest today. This is the F Club Radio Show, AM 1200, WCHB.